Okay. Armed with the information of episode 5, I can now go into edit mode and dive into it and explain to you guys uh, the features that are in there. There is no way I'm going to be able to explain everything because there's just too much. But what I will be able to do is take you guys through the basic walkthrough of what the features are. And then on the next episode, I'm going to walk you guys through how to create a simple 3D object using Virto Studio's edit mode features. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to tap an object. Now, when you edit an object, the wireframe or the polygons are exposed. In the simplest case of this plane, it is created out of a quad, uh, which is just four vertices linked together in one polygon. I'm going to go ahead and delete that and regenerate it real quickly. If I hit the plus button and I hit this gear over here, there's an option that I didn't mention before. Fantastic. By default in Virto Studio, because it's the most convenient, meshes are generated using triangles. However, um, or sorry, they're generated using quads. However, for the sake of argument or explanation, I'm going to use the triangle generation mode instead. Triangles are slightly more efficient. Uh, so now I'm going to regenerate that plane, go into edit mode, and you can see the, uh, the plane is created out of two triangles now. Um, so let's go over the features of edit mode. Before I do that, once again, I'm going to trash this. I want to pick something more interesting, which is a torus. And I'm going to generate a piece of text with just one letter in it, the letter A. Because these are more interesting to look at in the edit mode than just a stupid plane. Move this over here. So, one thing I want to hit on right away is that everything that's on that blue object toolbar is exactly the same functionality that you saw in object mode for edit mode, meaning the only difference is instead of moving around entire objects, you are moving around now your selection which will contain vertices or polygons. So the idea here is that if I tap just one of these points with my finger in auto mode, I have now selected that one vertex. And if you notice in the lower left hand corner it now says I have one vertex selected out of 576. And if I auto mode pan around it, in the space around it, nothing happens. But if I swipe my finger over anywhere on the entire object, I can now move that one vertex selection around and undo that. And the same idea goes with any of these other tools. If I say I want to select a bunch of vertices and then hit the move tool, I can move those around and actually manipulate the mesh. And once I do that, the normals are automatically recalculated for the lighting and everything is kind of great. So I can select all down here which is a nice little shortcut button. And then I can pick something like scale. I can scale the mesh. I can rotate it. Kind of the same exact features we had before, but the difference is now you are no longer limited to moving the entire object. You can now manipulate the polygons and, and, and the vertices. So I'm going to really quickly try to go through all the stuff you can do here. At the bottom left, you notice there's V, which is the number of vertices in the entire model, and then F, which is the number of faces in the entire model. Faces meaning polygons. If I tap this, uh, this label down here, the F will change to A and toggle back and forth. The best way I can explain that is V is the number of virtual vertices and A is the number of actual vertices. And the way that works is if you have something interesting in Virto Studio, such as flat shading going on, I will actually, under the hood, use two vertices and merge them into one so that one vertex could have a normal vector facing in one direction and another one same side of it can be facing in another. You usually don't have to concern yourself with that too much. Just know that if you're interested in how much um, vertices are actually being used on the uh, graphics hardware, you can find that number out. Next to that is the selection mode uh, selector. By default, there, you are in point mode, meaning you're selecting points. If you toggle that to triangles, you can actually now select the individual polygons and you can move those around. Immediately we're noticing it's not that convenient to work with triangles as a modeler. So what I'm going to go ahead and do real quickly is delete this torus and regenerate it using quads. So you guys can see what the quads look like again. Torus, bam, over here. Scale. Now we have quads. So when you're using polygon mode, you can grab one of these and you can move the entire polygon around, which is much nicer than working with the individual vertices if you don't want that amount of control. Um, once again, you can select more than one. Notice uh, if I change the select down here to additive select, I can just keep expanding my selections. Maybe I want to take these four and I want to push them out a little bit. I can do that. Um, I could rotate them about their own 
local center, which is kind of a weird way to twist the model around, so there's that capability. So that's working with the uh, triangle selection mode. Um, next to that is opaque or transparency mode, and the best way I can describe that is you'll notice this is a 3D torus, so let me center the camera to this before things get crazy. There we go. So you notice there's another side of this torus and there's polygons on the back side. Now if I switch this to a peg and I do a lasso selection, I've selected everything that's looking at me, but nothing's really been selected on the other side that I couldn't see. Now that's convenient sometimes if you don't want to select more than a couple things, but if you switch this to transparent and you drag a box, now you're selecting all the way through transparently. And the idea here is that if I drag a box around everything, I've selected the whole lot of it. So that is transparency selection, which is a convenient mechanism. Um, so once you have your selection, what can you do with it? Well, let me just select, um, let's move over to the text, shall we? Here, so there's the A. I'm going to send the view to that. I'm going to zoom all the way in the A. The A is going to look a little crazy because it's actually generated using a uh, text extrusion algorithm. So there's quite a few triangles in here, kind of all over the place. Um, but if we go over here, we can notice that there's two triangles here which make up kind of the back end of the A. So if we select this, what can we do with our selection in 3D space? Well, there's quite a bit. Uh, I've already shown you guys that you can move, rotate, scale, select the selection as well. You can delete, which means I've just wiped those polygons out. So now there's kind of a hole in the A. So you can delete the individual selection. You can take the vertices and you can duplicate them. So if we want to take A and we want to move that again, you can do that. You can copy and paste them as well. So if I want to take this A that I have just created, the second one, and I want to copy it to the clipboard, I can then paste that into another scene or, of course, directly into this scene. Now the reason why that's interesting is if I wanted to, I could actually paste this into the other object. So I'm going to go ahead and undo that paste. So this is object one, or the first one, and this one I can make red, right, because this is a separate mesh. If I go over to here, I can make this have any other shader or any other shader properties that I want. But what's interesting is if I go to here and I paste, I've now pasted that A into the torus object, and there it is. And now this one is part of this object where these A's are part of the original. So that's another um, thing you can do in edit mode. Uh, I'm trying not to get off in too many tangents here. What else can you do? Uh, there's the mesh options. This allows you to select smooth shading or flat shading. And the way the flat shading works is that by default, all shading is smooth. Uh, that's not entirely true, but for a lot of the objects it is. If you want to have flat shading, you could set flat and then you could set the angle between two faces that are minimum before the flat shading will occur. If I set it all the way to zero, we've now created kind of a retro looking flat shaded uh, model. And you'll notice once I do that, the number of actual vertices is much higher than the, uh, the virtual vertices shown. So that's flat shading. If I wanted that to go back to smooth, I can hit mesh and just say set smooth. And just like that, I've regenerated a smooth um, model. I can then also show the normal, so if I want to actually see them, this is very useful if I'm working with something and I think the normals might be flipped. For example, if I take this polygon, um, well, I don't want to get too far ahead of myself. So yeah, I have show normals. Generate tangents is something that's used. I mentioned this way back in one of the earlier episodes because uh, I went out of order. Um, bump mapping and other special shaders need generate tangents to work. Um, those generate tangents is usually turned on for you automatically when you select one of those shaders. Moving on to the face menu, we have many options here. The first one I want to actually show off. I can't go through all these in the amount of time I have. It's just too much. Um, the one I did want to show, though, is that there is an option called flip, which will actually flip the normal or reverse the face so that you have the normal now facing the other direction for this vertex or this, um, this polygon. And you'll notice now it's not lit properly. And that's because this one polygon is now facing the other way, away from the light. So if you ever have that problem, the flip feature is really good because it's a way to make sure all your normals are facing in the right direction. So that's um, that. Real quickly, so there's subdivide. The way subdivide works is you actually subdivide the geometry so that you uh, take every single polygon and divide it 
quads create four more polygons. Uh, triangles create three. So let me show off subdivide here. Hopefully I don't go off on too much of a tangent. So here's a plane polygon. I'm going to select this. I'm going to turn off show normals here. I could subdivide it, and now I have four bird, uh, polygons from one. If I go into split quads down here, I split the quads off into two triangles. If you select quads, you can split them. And now, I'm going to select this polygon. I'm going to delete it. Now we only have one triangle. And if I subdivide this one, I, I guess I lied. You get four, but it's a, it's a different it's a different kind of subdivision than it is with uh, with uh, quads. So what else can you do? You can bring up the texture coordinate editor, which uh, I'd like to go over in a later video when I talk about texturing. You can smooth, which wouldn't make a lot of sense for this, but let me show what smooth might look like on uh, plane. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this face, subdivide it a couple times. I'm going to select these ones in the middle. I'm going to move them upwards. And the idea behind smooth is that it takes something and it smooths it out every time you run it. That's smooth. You can create some interesting stuff with that. You can select connected, which is very useful. If you have, for example, this one face and you hit select connected, it'll select everything connected to it. A better example would be if I type, if I press a vertex on the A and I hit select connected, it'll select all the vertices connected to that A, which is a nice selection tool. What else do I have? I have split quads and separate. Separate is a way to kind of undo the copy and paste thing I was talking about before. So for example, if I wanted to take this one polygon and separate it out to a separate object, I just hit separate and now that polygon is on its own, uh, which is neat. So I just basically put a hole in this thing by doing that. Um, that is essentially all there is here. I might have missed a couple things. There's quite a of other things. I could select all quads, select all triangles, um, that's that. So very last before we finish off, because this video is probably running long, I want to show you guys the extrude feature. What extrude does, it's very similar to the way the sketch and text tool work. You select any set of polygons, one or many, and you extrude them by basically, I guess the best way I can describe this is you, you make a copy of them, but you build a wall around it. So I want to extrude on the y-axis with a, a depth of like eight units, and I want to cap off the top. And by doing that, I've actually extruded the mesh upwards from that selection. So that's how extrusion works. And that's a really powerful tool. You can do quite a bit with that one alone. Um, so that's the basic building blocks of 3D models and how you can tweak them with Virto Studio. And, and that's the basic intro of the edit mode. Uh, next video, I will show you guys how to build an interesting model, a simple model, uh, using Virto Studio's features, including the edit.